the new Marlin Model 1894 Classic. Let's check it out. Marlin's known for their lever action rifles. In fact, the very first lever action rifle I ever purchased was a Marlin 3030. It was the Model 30A, it's their basic model. Great gun. And it really started uh, my affection for Marlin lever actions. When Freedom Group purchased Marlin, I mean, the quality really suffered and really brought the Marlin name down. Uh, now, Ruger has bought Marlin and they've brought it back up to that honestly legendary status. Uh, this is the new model 1894. It's in 44 Magnum. Uh, it is a sweet shooting gun. Very slick action. The beautiful bluing. The black American walnut stocks that are just excellently done. I mean, it just speaks of Ruger quality and bringing back the old Marlin Classic. And guys, lever action rifles are as American as apple pie and baseball. I mean, they're the guns that won the West. And honestly, the Lever Action 3030 was one of the most popular hunting rifles for decades. It's just light, handy, easy to use. So we're going to check out the new Marlin 1894, a beautiful rifle. Now we want to give a big thank you to Marlin for sending the model 1894 for this review. And guys, I'll highly encourage you, if you've never owned a Lever Action rifle, uh, there's just something about it's so handy, it's lightweight, and yet it carries you know, up to 10 rounds of 44 Magnum. Great in the field, great in the brush. And then again, if you wanna get dressed up with an old cowboy hat and a six shooter, this makes an excellent companion. Guys, it's great to see Marlin back in the saddle. Uh, you know, for a few years there, uh, when Freedom Group owned them, uh, they just suffered. The quality was not what it used to be with the old Marlins. And again, my first Marlin was a 30A lever action 3030. I loved that gun. And it was one of the base models, but that was very well made. And this is getting back to those roots. Of course, this is made in Mayadan, North Carolina, but it's now owned by Ruger. And Ruger has really turned things around. Beautiful hot salt bluing, uh, the American black walnut stocks, uh, very well done. Now, we did a review on the model 1895 Trapper by Marlin. Uh, it was in 4570, stainless steel. It was, it was a beautiful gun. I mean, just very well made. Uh, of course, you know, I'll have the review annotated above, but you know, really that 4570 packs a big punch and the gun was just extremely well made. But we're also gonna do some comparisons with a couple of Henry's. Uh, we wanted to look at it. I mean, Henry has been one of the premier lever action rifle companies over the past few years making really high quality lever action rifle. And so we wanna kinda of take a look at the two between them because honestly, uh, there's some pros and cons between both. Uh, and it's gonna get down to a matter of preference, but we'll take a look at it. But overall, I'm really excited about what Marlin has put together and I'm looking forward to other offerings. In fact, they've just come out with their model 336 in 3030. And that's been a traditional American classic for a long time. I want to check to make sure the gun's unloaded. Just pull down our lever, look in the chamber, and it's clear. Uh, it does have one of the old style square finger levers. Receiver, the lever, the trigger, these are all CNC machined. The tang on the hammer has nice serrations. And then we have a cross bolt safety, red for fire, and then just black for safe. And the flat top of the receiver has been drilled and tapped. So you can mount a scope on here if you want. We have semi buckhorn sights and this can be adjusted for elevation, which we did have to do at the range. 
Now the front sight is a post and we have a brass speed and you do have that cover over it and it is serrated right at the front ramp and this just cuts down on glare. And we have a steel barrel band up front. And we have a steel band for our handguard mount. The checkering on the handguard, very well done. Beautiful grain in that black walnut stock. Straight butt stock and again that beautiful checkering with a diamond pattern. And again, that beautiful grain all the way through of the American Black Walnut. Rubber butt pad with a spacer, and we have the Marlin logo on the back. Now the hammer does come back to a half cock position, and this is for your safety, another redundant safety. And then we bring it back all the way, and of course it's ready to fire. But I love those two clicks. Very definite, and I just love that sound. <laughs> <laughs> Included with the Marlin is one of their hammer spurs. It just goes right on here and you just screw it in with a set screw. Uh, but this just makes it easier, especially if you have an optic mounted, to be able to pull that hammer back. Or whether you have an optic or not, it just gives you a little bit more real estate. Of course, bringing that lever back, you know, it is just a square piece of metal. It makes it really strong. And it's very smooth. Then we have that square bolt. It just has those flat sides. It's a very strong bolt system. And guys, super smooth. The loading gate has that perfect tension. It's not too tight, and yet it's easy to load those rounds. One of the things about the Freedom Group model I had, it was very stiff and really hard to load, and it would pinch your finger. This is just perfect. Now it comes with a 20 and a quarter inch uh, cold hammer forge barrel, which really preserves your accuracy longer. Uh, the lands and grooves are more precise. The rifling's just, it'll hold up longer. So it's gonna give you better accuracy and long life with the barrel overall. It'll hold 10 44 Magnum rounds in the tube magazine. It holds 11 44 Special loads. 44 Special is a lot less recoil, uh, and it's a little bit more fun to shoot. The 44 Magnum is going to give you a lot of power and great for hunting. As far as trigger action, uh, there's just a touch of take up. Very nice break. Check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Three pounds, 12.4 ounces. Three pounds, 15.4 ounces. Weight on the Marlin, 1894. Six pounds, 2.8 ounces. We're shooting some Winchester 44 Remington Magnum. This is 240 grain. Uh, it's jacketed soft points. Uh, 44 mag right now. It's coming back, but it's coming back slow. And uh, we also have some 44 specials from Federal. We're just gonna try out. But uh, I'm gonna tell you what, this rifle is beautiful. Loads really smooth. I love lever action rifles anyway, and uh, when I heard that Marlin was reintroducing the 1894, uh, you know, I was really excited because I just love that original design. Uh, and ever since Ruger picked up Marlin, I mean, they have made a world of difference with these rifles. Marlin has suffered for a while. But this is a beautiful, what, I mean, the wood on this rifle is beautiful. The finish, uh, it's just, uh, gets back to a very classic look. I mean, you pull this out and it looks like something that was made back in the 1960s with the quality. Uh, 44 Magnum is a great little round. Uh, it's not an anemic, even in a rifle. I mean, it has a little bit of a punch to it. Makes it a great deer gun, great brush gun, handy and lightweight. Uh, the buckhorn sights show up really well, just gets back to the roots. But one of the big pluses for the 1894 is you have a tap receiver, so you can put a scope mount on here uh, without doing one of the side scope mounts like they did on the old Winchesters because the ejection is out the side. And so that makes it really nice as well. And those 10 rounds, man, I mean, that gives you a lot of capacity for this little lever action. 
I'm going to be honest, guys. You know, if you're under a state which has a lot of restrictions for semi-automatics, a good lever-action rifle is really fast. A little slower to load than a magazine, but, I mean, it is quick to get on target. But makes a great hunting companion. On the second target, we adjusted our sights, and guys, at 100 yards, we were hitting just one solid group. Now here we have the Marlin Model 1894. Here we have a Henry, and this is a big boy. It's actually in 4570, uh, but we can look at a lot of the differences between these because the big boy, you know, pretty much has the same kind of features to it. The black American walnut stocks versus just an American walnut stocks, and these are all sourced out of the U.S., uh, one thing about the Henry, though, is it has this non-spookum, is what they call it, kind of a matte finish to it. Um, it is a bluing, uh, and but it's definitely muted. Uh, with the Marlin, it's a very high-polished, nice blue to it. And I say high-polished, it's honestly a little bit of a satin, but a very rich, deep blue. Here you can see the matte finish on the Henry, and then that really nice bluing. Uh, and again, guys, it's up to preference. The checkering uh, on the Marlin, a little deeper. Uh, with the Henry, it's really nice, but we have a little more aggressive texturing, uh, definitely a different pattern, and you have that diamond shape in the center. Here's the checkering on the handguard, uh, just some differences. Uh, the Marlin kind of comes around with the diamond pattern. The Henry is more, you know, kind of sectional. And then the attachment on the end of the handguard is a band, and then we have just a cap on the end of the Henry. And here at the end, the barrel band with the tube and the barrel, and then we have the actual loading tube. So it's just a little bit of a different setup. And with the Henry, uh, we have a cross bolt safety. So we can use that as a redundant safety on the Henry. It does not have the cross bolt safety. The rubber butt pad on the Henry, you know, thin with a spacer. Uh, with the Henry, I mean, this is for the 4570, and it is thicker and it has the vents but the standard 44 Magnum comes with just a soft rubber butt pad, about the same thickness. Of course, we've got this one with a pistol grip. They come just straight stock as well. But one of the biggest differences is this, the tube fed. Uh, with the Henry, you know, we've got the tube fed option, and really that was pretty much the only thing they offered at one point. Uh, and so you could load here in the tube, uh, and then that was it. Uh, then Henry started adding their side gate. So really, Henry has the side gate and the loading tube, which just gives you a good combination. Uh, but this is more traditional toward the 1894. Uh, this is definitely, you know, just a different type style. And, and I really like that. I think that gives the Henry a little bit of a, a bonus. Honestly, I think the wood on the Marlin is just a little nicer. I think the grain really comes out well. Uh, the finish, honestly, has a little bit more of a satin, nice sheen to it. Uh, more traditional, uh, buckhorn sights, brass bead on the front, uh, the Henry is covered, and there are different type levers on the Henry. Uh, this is just an oval. Of course, we have the square finger uh, trigger lever here, but one operational difference is the uh, bolt, and it's just the round bolt with the Henry, and so it is super slick, and that's one thing about Henry. They are super slick, very smooth actions. Uh, with the square or rectangular type flat side bolt, I mean, it's slick, but, you know, it's just not going to be quite as slick as the round. Now, Marlin has come out with their Model 336 in 3030. It has the round bolt. It's really slick. And so, really, we're going to have to compare those two. But honestly, overall, uh, there's some different features to them, but the quality is about on par. I mean, they are really very well done, both rifles. Uh, and it's just great to see Marlin come up to the Henry level. But really, Henry was putting out the best commercial grade lever action rifles out there. So it's really good to see Marlin and have some competition uh, because that way we have some more choices. But the price is a little bit different. Uh, on the Henry, we're looking at the 44 Magnum, uh, same kind of configuration as the Marlin. It comes in at about $1,050 retail. 
Uh, the Marlins coming in at $1,239, and that is retail. Of course, market price is going to be less. I will say, though, that because of the flat sides and some of the action, you know, that is going to play into it. The 336 may be less and may be more comparable. But again, overall, excellent, both excellent rifles, just a few differences. With Henry, we do have a lot of other models. This is one of the 44 Magnums. It has the case color hardened, has the octagon barrel. They come out, they have brass receiver models. Uh, there's a lot of differences. Well, guys, to wrap things up, um, beautiful rifle. Again, just great to see Marlin back on top of its game. Uh, thanks to Ruger and just beautiful bluing, beautiful wood stock, very smooth shooting, cold hammer forge barrel. It just has a lot of great features to it, and I think we're going to see more things. In fact, again, the Model 336, which has been a classic in 3030, uh, that's just been released, and we're going to be seeing others. So, again, guys, Marlin is back on top, and it's great to see it. So the Marlin Model 1894 Classic. Ruger has really brought this back up to its legendary quality. It's great to see Marlin back in the game. So guys, if you're looking for a lightweight hunting option that's very effective, or you just want to throw on your cowboy hat and your cowboy boots and go out to the range and pretend you're wider, I mean, this makes a great companion. And again, a big thanks to Marlin and Ruger for sending the Model 1894 for this review. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. The new Marlin, the new Marlin model 1880, the new Marlin model 1864. <laughs> this one of 10 plus one, and man, it just hand. It was a CNC machined receiver, CNC machined uh, pistol, CNC machined receiver, CMC, CNC machined, okay. and it just allows you to fine tune your windage. I mean, <laughs> That hot, hot. Now we have a, we have one of the square finger. It does have one of the square finger, uh, square finger lever. Good gosh. Beautiful black American walnut stocks. This mosquito is like eating me alive. Beautiful walnut stock. I don't wanna, I'm gonna go all into that already. But now the price is def, now the price is also a little bit of a difference. Uh, and I don't know what the price is on the Henry. Put the price on that. Henry. Boom. This isn't its first rodeo, but I think it's won this one. That sounds corny as heck. In fact, it's cringe. It's so bad.